How's it going guys? So after two years of ownership and almost 40,000 miles, I wanted to make a video going over my thoughts on my Ford Mustang Mach-E, a 2021 year model, and uh, whether I still think it's worth it and if I would purchase another one. All right, guys, so here we have it, the review and thoughts on my 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E. Um, disregard the mess in the garage. We just recently moved in, and I'm still trying to figure out what to do with this garage. Um, I actually still have this charging on a 120-volt uh, outlet here, just a regular outlet. Um, mainly because I haven't decided if I want to keep this car any longer or not. I mean, it's we've had it for almost two years, 40,000 miles. It's been an amazing car, but... Um, I'm going to go into a little list of uh, the pros and cons that after two years of ownership that I've uh, compiled about this car. Um, so let's get right into it. All right, guys. So we're going to start off with the pros. And number one about the uh, Mach-E has to be the looks. And that's really what won me over at the beginning is how beautiful this car is. The lines uh, for, you know, it's not an SUV. Uh, it's not a sports car. I'm sorry. Uh, it's an SUV, but the lines are just gorgeous compared to like the Tesla egg shape thing. Um, I just think it's a beautiful car. It's one of those cars that um, even when I park, you know, like when you look back at a car, when you really, really think it's beautiful, like when you just park the car in, the, in a parking lot and you're like, man, I got to look back at my car because that is one sexy car. Um, I really think that this car is a gorgeous car. I mean, the styling, the you know, the lines, the tail lights, like everything about the car is really nice. Like I just, even after two years, I think this is a really, probably one of the best looking SUVs on the market, if not the best looking one. Um, even after two years of ownership, I still think that. So um, it's just a gorgeously designed car. And I think that's one of the pros of it, especially when compared to the Teslas, I just think they look like little eggs. Um, so I just think this is a way better looking car. Number two on the list of pros about owning this car has to be the reliability. Now, you'll see people on forums saying, hey, you know, I've had my Maki in the shop seven times in the last year or whatever. I have had no problems with this car. Um, literally have taken it to the dealership to get the uh, tires rotated. And that's literally it. Everything else has been over the air software updates and just uh, filling up the windshield washer fluid myself. Um, but zero reliability issues. And I'm sure this is a trend with uh, electric cars. You know, there's a lot of, of simplification of the drivetrain. Um, so there's not a lot to go wrong. And most of the problems these cars have obviously are going to be electronics since there's so many uh, fancy electronics in, in cars nowadays, especially electric cars. Um, but I have had zero reliability issues. So I love that. Um, my F-150, I've already, I've owned it for way less time and I've had it in the shop maybe like twice already for, uh, things here and there. And that's, you know, it's a gas engine car. So you would think it would be, you know, more reliable since the F-150 has been around forever, but no, it's actually been in the shop. Well, actually one of them were, was the, uh, the screen. And then I had another issue with the, uh, the four by four system on it. Uh, but anyways, back to the Mach E, um, this car has been absolutely reliable. Uh, no complaints or issues on it whatsoever in the reliability section. Number three on the pros list, uh, for the Mach-E is the smoothness. Now this I'm sure goes with uh, pretty much every uh, electric car or EV. Uh, but basically when I drive this car and then I get into my F-150 or into one of our other cars, um, basically I'm like, man, is this supposed to like clunk like this? Like the transmission? And mind you, the F-150 has a, the 10 speed, which is an amazing transmission, um, but the smoothness of EVs in general, um, it just like, once you get used to it, you're like, man, like you get into like a regular car with like a, you know, 10 speed or, you know, six speed transmission, whatever. Um, and you're just like, man, this feels clunky. Like it just feels like a dinosaur compared to the smoothness, you know, the instant torque, the acceleration of an EV vehicle. 
Next on the list of pros for the Mach-E has to be the interior. Now, the seats are absolutely amazing. Um, after two years of, you know, farting and, you know, scratching my butt on this seat, it has been absolutely amazing. Um, this, like, synthetic leather material has, you know, it stays plush and just wonderful even after two years of seat time and uh this car has been through some abuse i'm i weigh like 220 pounds so um you definitely see like you know some wear and tear on it if 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 there was any but uh this synthetic leather uh props to ford because it has held up amazingly now one thing about these seats is you kind of uh sit on top of the seat not in the seat so like the bolstering is not very good um but it's very comfortable. Now, with the sportiness of the suspension of this car, you would think it would have a little bit more bolstering. But no, you just kind of sit on top of the seat, um, which is really comfortable for long drives. Um, just not when you're trying to, you know, turn corners really quick or anything. You kind of slide around. But again, this is Ford. It's an American car. So, uh, you know, they're trying to market uh, the, the car and the seats to us bigger people. Uh, since we're in America, so yeah. Next on the list of pros with this car has to be uh, the dash layout and the infotainment uh, center. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, the one issue that I had that I'm super surprised that Ford actually listened um, and they did an over the air software update um, was the AC controls. So the AC controls used to be a little slidey thing that was super annoying. And then now you can actually, uh, change it with the knob so um instead of having to use the touch screen you can just you know twist the knob and pick the uh you know the air conditioning setting which is way better than the old version so props to ford uh for listening to the people and uh changing the annoying things that they could actually you know they have control of over and they can change with just the software update so that was amazing and uh yeah the screen uh zero problems with that um, it's huge. Uh, GPS works perfectly on there and you can see everything. Um, I just really enjoy the way the, the layout is of the screen uh, with the, uh, you know, the vertical uh, screen versus Tesla's horizontal screen. And uh, yeah, I just think it's a beautifully designed uh, interior and infotainment system. All right, so next on the list of pros, and we're getting to the end of the pros here, and we're gonna get into the cons of uh, you know ownership of this car after two years. Uh, but one of the last pros that I wanna mention is the suspension. Um, now, a lot of people are saying, this is a four-door SUV. Uh, this is not a Mustang, it's an EV. Um, but suspension-wise, this car is really sporty. Like, you can take some turns. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to Go to any autocross events but that's on my list of things to do with this car um because the suspension is so good uh but yeah it's a pretty sporty suspension so in that uh regard they kind of kept the mustang name alive and gave it a really sporty suspension um just to make it feel like you're more in like a i mean it's still an suv but it's a sportier suv uh versus it just feeling like you're driving an f-150 or a truck or something all right, so now that we've gone over some of the pros of ownership of the Mustang Mach-E, I wanna talk about some of the cons that I've noticed over the last two years of ownership with this car. Um, and then one of them has to be uh, the trunk space. So when you're carrying some big things, there's not a lot of cargo space back here. And it kinda has to do with how the roof is sloped and shaped. Um, but these, these little uh, sections here are the, the limiting factor um, because of the sloping shape it's really hard to fit uh, really big thin things in there um, with the sloping uh, roof line um, so it's I mean it is what it is but um, yeah it's just not not a lot of space but it adds to the beauty of the car so you gotta uh, pick and choose your battles you want to make the car look sporty or do you want a lot of cargo space um, but one plus is uh, my dog Rex, I have a really big dog and he fits back there. I put the seats down and he loves riding in the car. So uh, no problems with, uh, you know, having a dog back there if you wanna, you know, if you wanna put your dog in there and take him somewhere. Next on the list of issues with the Mach-E after owning it for the past two years has to be the fact that there's no towing, there's no tow rating. Um, now I know the 
Tesla, I mean, Tesla is the standard. So we got to compare it to the, to the benchmark. Um, Tesla Model Y, Tesla Model X, they now can both uh, tow things. Now, as you can see behind me, I have my 19 foot boat that I believe in Europe with the tow rating of this car would be able to tow my boat. Um, but here in the US, there is no tow rating uh, for the Maki. -E. I know they have made some tow hitches uh, for it, um, but for some reason, Ford in the US has not uh, decided to uh, make this car uh, a towing vehicle or you know give it a tow rating, uh, which kind of sucks because I would definitely love to tow behind this thing and uh, get some of people reaction of uh, towing with this car. The next con, and this is probably uh, my biggest complaint, which of course, compared to benchmark Tesla, um, it's they've got it figured out, Ford does not. But anyways, it's the uh, public charging system for these cars. Now I live in central Florida and uh, I travel a lot to Miami, which is like uh, 300, you know, 200 and something, 300 miles. I can't get there on one charge. So I have to stop in between to charge and the public charging system, you know, Electrify America and uh, I know Shell has one, I forgot their name. But anyways, the public charging system for these non-Tesla EVs is absolute trash. It's terrible. Um, that's been mentioned a bunch of times, but I think that's my biggest issue with this. This is not a road trip car. Thankfully, this is, you know, our commuter car. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really hard to take road trips with it because it is terrible like you'll go to a, a charger and you know there will be six chargers and four of them won't work and the other two uh, people are already using them um, and then you're you know you have range anxiety and then you have to go to the next charger to see if maybe that one has uh, something that's online and working um, so public charging system is absolutely terrible 10 out of 10 would not recommend road trips in a mach -E. um, we stopped like we maybe took like two road trips and after struggling um for you know to find the chargers and all that stuff we're just like we just gave up like we don't road trip in this car that's absolutely a terrible idea um and a lot of youtubers and stuff have kind of showed you know why it's so terrible um but hopefully we'll see um tesla says they're now opening uh chargers for non-tesla vehicles uh, so we'll see how that goes. Maybe that'll actually change the game a little bit and make uh, road tripping easier in the Mach-E. But as of right now, terrible idea to road trip in the Mach-E with the current infrastructure. Um, it's just, it's not reliable at all. And it's just going to give you more anxiety than it's worth. Uh, so just make sure you have another uh, gasoline vehicle that you can use uh, for road trips. All right, guys. So I actually wanted to touch on something that after two years of ownership, this actually concerned me at the beginning of when I first was looking into buying this vehicle and I was between the Select and the Premium. This is uh, the Premium model, um, but the Select has a metal roof and the Premium has a glass roof. Um, so I'm sure you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, but let me just open up here so you guys can see. Uh, this is a completely glass roof. Like you can see my garage opener right there. Uh, and. I live in Florida, so I thought, you know, it's probably get super hot um, and it's going to be terrible. Um, like, why didn't they make like a little uh, sunroof cover for it? Like, it didn't make sense. But after two years of ownership, I have touched that glass roof multiple times. And even in the Florida 100 degree weather, it has never, ever gotten hot. Like, I don't know what type of glass that's made out of, but it is amazing. Um, the, you know, rear passengers always comment on like, oh, this is a beautiful view, you know, with the glass, um, but it never gets hot. So if you're on the fence on whether to get, uh, you know, a select with the metal roof or the premium with the glass roof, uh, and you're worried about heat coming through, um, it is perfectly normal temperature. It does not get hot at all. I don't know what kind of witchcraft, uh, Ford put into it, but, um, it doesn't get hot. So just a fun fact. Now to the final question, and I'm gonna ask you guys because a lot of you guys own Mach-E's or own Teslas, um, so maybe you can give me your input. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think is a better car? This or the direct Tesla competitor, which would be the Model Y. Um, I still think 
this is a way better looking car. Now, Tesla has been in the game of EVs a little bit longer and have kind of got their things uh, figured out a little bit better. Um, but in regards to looks, this car is beautiful. Um, I think the Model Y looks like an egg. Um, so I would pick this car over the Model Y still. Um, in regards to which one is better, it just comes down to personal preference. But um, the layout of the interior of this car compared to the minimalistic look of the Model Y, I still take this car over the Model Y. And the exterior looks 1000%. This car looks better. Um, so there you have it. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think is a better car? The Mach-E or the direct competitor, which is the Model Y? And it's interesting because there's so many more EVs coming out um that we'll see you know the competition is 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 gonna get heated so it'll be interesting to see what comes out in the future and how it compares to this car but thank you guys so much for watching the video if you liked it make sure to give it a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next one